Welcome back to Rockfish Farm. Today's video is all about rope halters, why I use them with my training, how to put them on your horse, how to hang them on your stall door when they're not in use, and I'm going to share my favorite training program that I use here on our farm. Stay tuned. Good morning. We are here early this morning. I just got everybody fed, but I wanted to share an important part of training that I really feel, and that is all about rope halters. So we've got rope halters. I've got two different kinds that I want to show you which one I like better and why, and then the regular old nylon halter. So I don't use these ever. <laughs> uh, I used to, and uh, now I feel like they are just terrible now that I've used these rope halters. I think these look more sleek too, but more so than being sleek, those halters, the horses can pull against the pressure and then just sit there. Have you ever tried to load a horse in a trailer in one of those things that didn't want to get on? They just sit there and they just lean back on that pressure. I'm telling you, they're the worst. Now, there's times for them. Obviously, once you get them on the trailer, you got the breakaway feature. You know, you can switch them out. Sometimes I'll put this on over top of that one to get them onto the trailer if I'm having an issue. Uh, sometimes I will just load them into the trailer on these. For some reason, my mind, like, can't wrap its head around using this in the horse trailer. So, there are times and places for those. So, first of all, so this is the rope halter. And there are two different kinds. This one actually came from Pirelli's program. And we'll talk about training programs in a minute, uh, which ones are my favorite because it's definitely not that one. <laughs> so the other type of rope halter is like a very cheap flimsy one that you can get from Tractor Supply, most of your like farm stores. I don't really care for these. They're not terrible, but they're not great. First of all, I think this one is way too huge. And so it's just not putting the pressure points where I need it. And it's just so flimsy. I don't know. It does have the knots on them, but I just don't love them. The other thing is the rope that comes with it just ties around here. There's no snap. So the important part about having a nice big snap, let me grab one, is it can put a feel on your horse. You know, it's got a little bit more weight to it. These are really nice. I do like the Pirelli's uh, ropes and halters, uh, but that nice big heavy snap when you're wiggling it, telling them to back up, it, it really puts the feel on that halter. Whereas just the knot hooked to this one, it's just not great for training. Some of them are super cute. There, I have seen ones also that have the rope attached to it completely like you can't even remove it at all that won't put any type of feel on your horse when you're training it so that one's out all right so these nice big ones you've got this nice big snap on it it you twist it a lot of them are different but it's nice and heavy and it's really good quality and the rope is much longer which is great for training you know i use different size ropes to get them to pay attention to me at different lengths away from me but for starters, I always use this. And then of course, this is the one like I lead with all of the time. So the rope halters allow for a more subtle cue. And like I said, they can't pull against them to get out of that pressure that you're putting against them. In my eyes, a rope halter is the only way to go if you are doing groundwork and training. Not to mention, I think they give the horse just a nice sleek look. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to actually apply it to your horse because some people look at this thing and they're like, how do you put that on your horse? So we're gonna find a couple different parts to this halter. So there's always gonna be a double loop at the bottom, a nice thick knot with a loop at the bottom. And so it's thicker than the other one, that's where your snap is gonna go. So your snap always goes underneath of your chin, right? So then the nose band across the top of the nose band, typically on a nice one, there's going to be two knots. Okay. So you're going to find the circle with the two knots and the double nose band. Okay. At the bottom of that will be I'm trying to put it so you can see it will be the big loop that you hook the halter to. So if you find that loop and you put this on the outside, then you slide this part over your horse's nose and then you can find the long strap that goes over the ear and then it ties into this. So you go through, which I'll show you when we put it on the horse. 
but you're gonna put it through and there's a specific way that you tie this so that it doesn't slip. This is Reese's Pieces. This is my middle daughter's horse. We just got her in April and she has not had much training. She is going on my list for training uh, this fall. She's a super sweet horse, just doesn't have a whole lot of buttons. So we're gonna apply this to her. So we're gonna find the circle with the double nose band and I'm gonna hold it at top. Yes, I love you too. I love you too. <laughs> so I hold the double nose band at the top with the two knots and that goes over her nose, okay? So if I'm putting this on, the snap end, the double loop snap end, I'm facing out away from her nose, okay? So I'm gonna slide that over her nose and then we find the long strap and I toss it up over and we come to tie. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna hold the loop here and you're gonna come down, you're gonna slide it through the back side, and I'm gonna make it tight, not too tight, but it will slip a little bit, but if you tie it like this, it won't slip as far as it would if you didn't tie it like this. So most people wanna come up here and tie it above that knot, and you don't wanna do that because that will allow it to slip very, very quickly. So you're going to tie it down on this loop. So what I do is I hold it at the very top and I place it around the back side, right behind this loop. Hoping you can see that. Let me see if I can get you closer. So I'm holding it up, going behind the loop, okay? And then tucking it through so it sits right on top of that loop, okay? So let me show you one more time. You can also, if you make like a gun finger, is how I was taught, take it, take your thumb and grab it, put it behind and loop it, <laughs> okay? That way it's sitting right on top of that knot and that's not gonna allow it to slip. Doesn't she look so much more sleek with just this tiny halter on? You'll get it, practice makes perfect. It's very easy to do and you won't even think twice about it once you start practicing it. So now I wanna talk about how to hang it on the barn because I've tried, you can just, like you can hang it up here and it's like nothing's ever big enough and it just looks like a huge mess and then everything falls off. Let me show you how I hang it. So the first thing I do is I take my snap and I actually attach it to the halter, okay? Then I come in and I tie my halter just as if it was on the horse and I leave at least a little bit of looping. I don't tie it all the way tight. Obviously it's not on a horse so you can't you know, tie it to a horse, but I just tie it as if I would, okay? All right, so then I kind of put this over my arm and you wanna take your lead rope and you wanna do three loops, okay? So now I've got my loops and then I've got my halter, okay? I'm holding it at the crown piece. I'm gonna open the crown piece because it's two straps as well. So I'm gonna open the crown piece, lay my loop in there, and now I've got a nice, clean way to hang my halter on the barn. Nothing falls off, and it just looks so much neater when you're looking down the barn rather than these ropes and halters all jumbled up hanging on the stall doors. Hey, buddy. Are you happy to be out and there's no rain today? Yeah. Looking down the barn, look how much neater this looks. So we've got them all hanging up. Hi, bud. Okay, so let's talk about training programs. Getting into a training program changed my horse life. Not that I am like this awesome horse trainer, but it just changed my horsemanship in so many ways. And the way that I view things, the way that I view their bad attitudes sometimes, the way that I view anything that happens, the way I view teaching my children, the way I view myself riding, and the goals that I have riding. Now, I personally love, and I know there's a lot of controversy around him, but I personally love Clinton Anderson, and I will tell you why. There's a lot of people that do not care for him. Personally, I don't care for his personality. However, his training program is amazing. Uh, I started off with Pirelli's, and I got to the point where 
I was not having any leadership with the horses and I wasn't moving on. I wasn't really, I was learning stuff, but some of the stuff I kept thinking, I'm like, this does not sound right. I don't want to teach my horse how to canter with a bucket of grain because that's not gonna be happening every time. And he would talk about how he would jump a fence and go off and then jump the riding ring fence and come back and give his horse some grain. And I'm like, yeah, that's not really the way I want to do this. <laughs> There's other things I did not care for the program. If, if I'm being completely honest, I think the Pirelli program will get you killed. <laughs> As my personal thoughts there, I think it was going to get me killed because I did not have the knowledge and the leadership that was taught by that program. I ended up coming across Clinton Anderson. I came across YouTube videos of him first, and I'm going to be really honest. That show that he had on RFD TV makes him look terrible, makes him look like an abusive horse trainer. And that is absolutely not what his program is. So if you look at that and you say, oh, I would never do that. His program is not like that. I'm just telling you. And a lot of opinions I see on him come from that show. You can tell that they're coming from that show and not from his actual training program. His training program is actually very... Uh, you know, uses pressure and release. There's no like whooping of the horse. You know, there's just, it's not terrible. I'm just telling you. Now there's so many other people out there. A lot of people have recommended Buck Branneman. To be honest with you, I think you have to look at all of them and you have to look at the ones that connect with you. And maybe not necessarily that person, but that training program and the way it's laid out. Whereas I don't really care for Clinton Anderson as a person. However, I do like his program. The way it's laid out is very clean cut. It's very easy to understand. It's very easy to navigate. It's got the app on the phone. I mean, it is just, he comes through, he shows you everything on a horse that already knows what to do so you know your end goal. He comes through and uses a horse that he starts training from scratch so he goes through the entire program with you on this horse. If this horse does it, perfectly because some horses do do some things perfectly right from the get-go then he comes in with another horse that may show something that you need to know what to change and then it even follows up with all of these videos on what to do when it goes wrong how long to spend on this activity and he just has a huge video collection of so many different topics uh, of anything you would want to know how to fix bucking, how to fix if they do this, how to fix if they kick the stall door, how to fix it if they, you know, anything, it's on there and you can just easily go search for it and look it up. His program was the very first one that I found that I really enjoyed and really learned a ton with. Now I'm starting to pull in some things from Buck Brandeman and some others out there, just watching some of them on YouTube um, also and different ways to go about it and you kind of end up putting your own spin on it. But I'm a huge fan of Clinton Anderson's training program. There, I said it. And some people are going to have issues with it, but it is really good. I personally think if you own a horse, you and you're an adult, it's a fantastic idea to get into a training program. Even if it's just, even if you don't want to fully train a horse, my gosh, it will teach you so much about controlling a horse horse's behavior, the respect, the lack of respect, I'm telling you, you will never look at a horse and how somebody else interacts with a horse the same way ever again. My horse life is forever changed because of it. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Are you being nosy? Like, what are you doing, Mom? Yes. And I am not putting down anybody who has not been through a program because honestly, three, four years ago, I would have never known anything about this until somebody introduced it to me. And you just think, oh, you just get on a horse and you ride it. And that's how you train it. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, by doing the things, but it is such a bigger process and it all begins with respect from your horse and how they think and how they process things and how they learn. They learn from the release of pressure not putting on the pressure. They want to find that release of pressure and then their little brains go, oh, okay, that's what you wanted me to do. 
and then everything comes so much easier. There's a really great saying and it says, frustration begins where knowledge ends. And now that I know that, I help my children ride, I am helping them learn these training aspects, these little bits and pieces. And I know, and I can see sometimes the frustration in them. And that to me, I now automatically go, they don't know what to do here. And it's not them getting frustrated. Well, it is them getting frustrated with the horse, but then I can step in and I can say, look, your horse may not know what you're asking it. You might be giving it a wrong cue. Let's step back and figure out what's happening here, what your horse needs from you and what you need from me. I'm telling you, I cannot speak any more highly of specifically down under horsemanship and any other training program out there that you find you learn from. And if you learn from Pirelli, a lot of people do, okay? But be careful in my eyes with that one. Because honestly, they're all teaching basically the same thing. It's just a matter of how it's laid out and how you respond to that information. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. You can leave them down below and I will help you find the right training program for you because there is so many out there and it is, it's so wonderful. And I'm, even if you don't want to train, even if you just ride leisurely, you will be forever changed. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe to us. We're going to be showing you some actual training bits and pieces. I'm training three of them this fall. This one I've been working with. This is the one that I kind of learned how to train with. And he's been super fun and it's so neat to me to see the changes in him. I'm also working with Reese this fall, the one that you saw before. Obviously she's rideable, but I wanna put those buttons on her and just a little bit more respect. She's only six years old, she's super sweet and has just a ton of personality and a ton of potential, but I wanna add those buttons. And then I've got little Holly, a little hackney pony, and she doesn't have much training at all. So we're pretty much starting from scratch. We've been on her back, but there's not much there at all. So we're kind of going to be taking her and I'm going to show it to you all on video because I think it'll be neat to watch their journey. And at least for me to look back on, because it's hard to remember how they were sometimes when you very first got them and you go, oh my gosh, they're so different. And it's like, I did that. I did that. You're training a horse, whether you know it or not. You're either training them to allow them to have that bad behavior, that disrespect, or you're training them to step up and be a better horse each and every day, little by little. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.